Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the very nostalgic Railway Rifle. However, during one playthrough you can only acquire three of the four Railway Rifles. Not including legendary drops of course. The first two methods of acquiring the Railway Rifle I will not be going into super detail about. Firstly, during the quest Tactical Thinking it is carried by Desdemona and it can be retrieved from her body. And secondly, it is a potential reward for completing the quest Underground Undercover. Now, let's move on to and cover the two guaranteed locations for the Railway Rifle that are not associated to any quests. Firstly, we need to come to Bedford Station, located in the zone Lexington and Northwest Commonwealth. Here on the Pip-Boy map, Vault 111 is here, and Bedford Station is to the east-southeast of Vault 111. Just a warning, this area is covered in ghouls, so be prepared. Once here, from this white railroad tower, we need to follow the tracks to the south. It is only a short walk, as we need to head into this blue train carriage. From the side here, we can head up this door and use it as a ramp. Once in here, towards the back of the carriage, there will be a skeleton on a bedroll, and in the very back right corner of the carriage is the Railway Rifle. Now this Railway Rifle will only appear if your character is level 25 or higher. If you come here at a lower level, it will not be here, however you can then come back after you reach level 25, and the Railway Rifle will now be here, ready for you to pick it up. And secondly, we want to head to Big John's Salvage, located in the zone Quincy and Southern Commonwealth. As we can see on the Pip-Boy map, Diamond City is here, and Big John's Salvage is to the southeast of Diamond City. And another warning for you all, this area is filled with super mutants, or at least it should be. Once we arrive at Big John's Salvage, if we come in from the south, we want to head towards the house on our left. We want to follow the wide fence on our right, and once it meets the white picket fence, turn right. We need to head to the other side of this blue train carriage. Once at the other side, we will find a fridge bridge. Walk up the fridge bridge and hop down into the blue carriage. Here we will find a door to a shelter. However, if we try and activate it, this trap door is sealed shut. You will notice a wire coming off the trap door. We need to track that wire down or across. This will take us to the left and to the brick building. Continue following the wire along the brick building's walls. This will lead us down to the ground and to this circuit breaker. Open the lid and flick the switch. The lines are now wiggling with power. From here, the easiest way back to the blue carriage is to head straight ahead and then veer off to the right and do a big sweeping 90 degree turn to the left. Run past the orange and pale blue containers and we will find ourselves back at the fridge bridge. Head back down into the blue carriage. Now the shelter door will be open and unlocked. Once in here, head straight ahead and on the metal table at the back of the shelter is the second guaranteed location railway rifle. However, However, this one will be here no matter what level you are. Be sure to pick this gun up to get yourself back on track. Before we look at the Railway Rifle's base stats, as always I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead, magazine or perk effects applied to my character so we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the Railway Rifle. Railway Rifles should always come with absolutely no modifications applied to them. So with absolutely no mods applied to it, the Railway Rifle has a base ballistic damage of 100, it uses the railway spike as ammunition, it has a fire rate of 10, its range is 119, its accuracy is 69, its weight is 14.4 and its value is 290 caps. Now we're going to be fully modding out the railway rifle. There are some choices you will have to make, like whether you want an automatic receiver or a standard receiver. Personally I go against the automatic receiver and I'll talk more about that later on in the video. You will also have to choose whether you want to put a scope on it or not and I have gone for the long night vision scope and again I will explain more on that choice later on in the video. So now that it's been fully modded out to my liking, it has a base ballistic damage of 100, it still uses the railway spike as ammunition, its fire rate is still 10, its range has gone from 119 to 185, its accuracy has gone up from 69 to 111, its weight has increased from 14.4 pounds to 22.7 pounds and its value has increased from 290 caps to 500 and 55 caps. Returning from 
Fallout 3, the Railway Rifle still uses the Railway Spikes as projectiles. These are rarely found as ammunition. They are cheap to buy and may be recovered from enemies slain using the weapon. However, the Railway Rifle has become enormously more powerful than its last version in Fallout 3. It is also most effective in VATS. And before we get too off track, it also makes a whistling sound during reloading. Now going back to the standard receiver and the choice to give it a scope. A lot of people don't like putting huge scopes on some weapons. However, I do feel that it is quite fitting for the Railway Rifle. Because the ammunition used, the Railway Spikes are so rare, and the Railway Rifle can do such high damage, you want to make every shot count. So although outside of VATS during close to moderate combat ranges, you will not be able to aim down sights with the Railway Rifle because there is such a big scope on it, that's not really where you want to use the Railway Rifle. So you either want to only use it in VATS where having a scope on it doesn't matter, or you want to use that huge scope to your advantage to make a precise pinpointed shot. And these are the same reasons that I highly encourage you not to put the automatic receiver on the railway rifle, you want to make every shot count, you don't just want to be holding down the trigger and firing willy nilly. Using the railway rifle as a sniper rifle is actually incredibly effective. Although it is not reflected in the stats, its accuracy is pinpointed point it shoots as straight as a laser beam. This on target accuracy combined with the railway rifle's huge damage does make it a bit of a see you later mate one hit wonder. However there is one major downside that can potentially derail this weapon. The railway spikes have a fly time. This only affects combat outside of VATS. So the further away your enemy the more you have to compensate for where they're going to be by the time the spike reaches them. As you'll see with this moving target here I had to judge where she would be and in turn fire in front of her to make sure that the railway spike connected with her head. Upon killing an enemy with the railway rifle, if you hit them in the torso, there is a good chance they will explode. If you hit them in the head or a limb, there is a good chance that limb will be removed and stuck to a solid object with the railway spike. This is an aesthetic brutality unique to the railway rifle, making once again each railway spike even more special and fun. So be sure to hang on to those little bastards. The railway rifle is a first class ticket, an express commute to the next platform in your killing career. Oh dear, am I running out of steam? Hmm, rhetorical. The railway rifle is fun, it requires no extra training, and finally it hits with the full force of an insane Spanish man's reasonings. Have fun working that one out. And here it is, the railway rifle in action. <laughs> I've been Camel, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I do hope this video helped you in acquiring the Railway Rifle. If you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. Of course, this will take you to the Fallout 4 guides playlist or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there.